thank you. <laughs> I'll, I'll be hearing a portion of, uh, of the meeting here. I'd like to thank, uh, thank everyone for coming. I'm going to read through this one statement, and I'm going to actually turn the floor over to Mr. Ethan Calhoun with the Department of Community Affairs, so let him go through. But the purpose of the, the public hearing that we're having is to update our comprehensive plan, the broadband amendment to our comprehensive plan. Um, this is for both Pickens County or for all Pickens County government and Pickens County Board of Commissioners and the municipalities of Jasper and the town of Talking Rock. So all three are a part of that, that comprehensive plan. Um, Pickens County and the municipalities of Jasper and Talking Rock have prepared an amendment to add broadband element to the Pickens County, Georgia 2018 Joint Comprehensive Plan. The draft broadband element was prepared according to the 2018 minimum planning standards set by the Georgia Department of Community Affairs and Georgia Planning Act of 1989. The draft broadband element includes an action plan com comprised of a narrative and map of unserved areas, goals, needs, opportunities, and community work program items. Accordingly, a joint public hearing is scheduled for tonight uh, for Pickens County and municipalities to accept comments on the comprehensive plan amendment. After the public hearing and receipt of, an, a, of public comments, the draft amendment will be transmitted by review by the Northwest Georgia Regional Commission and the Department of Community Affairs. So we're here tonight for that purpose, or this afternoon for that purpose. I'm going to turn the floor over to Mr. Calhoun and let him explain what that all means. So, thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, again, I'm Ethan Calhoun. I'm with the Northwest Georgia Regional Commission. And we work uh, as a regional council for Northwest Georgia, and we're made up of a, a body of officials from around the region. So there's representation from every county and uh, a number of numerous cities throughout our region. We've got 15 counties and 49 cities in Northwest Georgia. And one of our founding principles and the reason that we came to be back in the 1960s was as assistance to local governments in their planning efforts, especially with bigger type picture planning uh, efforts like uh, major transportation, uh, planning and zoning, and of course uh, economic development, and now broadband. Um, so this is something that we've been doing for decades, and, uh, and this is just one of the most current uh, items that is a, an issue statewide and has recently uh, been addressed in uh, several ways, uh, this being one of them. Uh, and essentially what we're doing is making an update or proposing to make an update to the 2018 Joint Comprehensive Plan, as the Chairman stated. And uh, what that means is we have to go through this process and, of course, have a public hearing to hear comment because this does affect a public document. Uh, long story short, why are we doing this? And, and to break it down, uh, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail. First and foremost, I'm not a uh, broadband uh, or an IT engineer, so I'll leave the technical stuff aside. I think uh, just for a breakdown, broadband, essentially high-speed internet, um, and I think uh, most people today understand uh, the importance of that for from recreation to education to uh, local economies. And so this is an issue that came up several years ago. Uh, I think it's, it's sparked with the uh, Georgia Legislature and the Rural Development Council. They went around the state. And this is something that, uh, in rural communities especially, was a major, major issue uh, across the state. And so they were tasked uh, at the legislative level to come up with a solution for this. And they worked with the Georgia Department of Community Affairs and other partners to come up with uh, a plan of action. And one of the steps in this plan of action to address this need is to first and foremost uh, create qualifiers to then create a grant program. And before the state can administer a grant, they have to have some way to measure communities uh, against one another, to say it uh, in, in the lightest fashion, to create an area of competition for communities to apply for that money. Because obviously there's not going to be enough money uh, initially to improve broadband across the entire state. It's going to have to be done on a piecemeal basis where it makes sense uh, in the applicable communities. So how do you determine those? You have to set uh, measurement and qualifying standards. And one of those standards for the Department of Community Affairs was easy, and that was that it needs to be in the comprehensive plan. It's not a requirement that it has to be in the plan, but that scale that they use to score communities' uh, grant applications 
has a point scale on it. And of course, there's all sorts of factors that uh, get points. Uh, one of those is having it uh, in the comprehensive plan. And that's quite frankly one of the easiest pieces of this puzzle. And so that's what we have here tonight is, uh, is this broadband element, which is about six additional pages in the existing comprehensive plan. It's an element unto itself. And it has a couple of action items associated with it. Uh, of course, we have maps in this plan that show the existing areas of coverage, uh, as well as the unserved areas, uh, both from the federal government level. The USDA has been addressing this issue now uh, for some time with their grant programs. Um, but when we look at the maps from a federal level, they didn't quite get down into the weeds as much on a door-to-door -door basis as the state was able to do, just simply because of the geographic area. USDA is covering the entire country. So there's a lot of areas in the USDA maps that show that they're already served with broadband internet. Because if a single individual in that census, uh, I believe it's census block, uh, or census tract, shows as served by broadband internet, it shows the entire area to be served. And so their maps were a little bit more vague and, and put out a lot of our region from being uh, eligible to even apply for that USDA funding, and uh, which is, again, it's a federal grant, so it's highly competitive in and of itself. So the state took it upon themselves to do a more in-depth study and to get a more accurate map to really tell a better story of where the areas are served and where they're not. And so those two maps are starkly different. The uh, Georgia State map shows a much greater area of unserved area, which means much more area that is eligible for uh, applying for grant money uh, from the state as soon as that money is made available. They are in the process right now of finishing up their uh, uh, grant program and getting that rolled out to take applications. They're just working out a few kinks to uh, get this all straight. Uh, so as soon as that money becomes available, then that grant cycle will begin. And again, that point structure is going to be how they measure it. The three action items that are part of this uh, uh, broadband amendment, of course, first is to uh, adopt the amendment as part of the comprehensive plan. Uh, this next step is to address the, uh, or to adopt a broadband ordinance. The state wrote a model ordinance several years ago because that was one of the parameters that uh, private sectors wanted to see. And what a broadband ordinance is, is it essentially just identifies a point of contact, a permit fee, and things like that to create a level playing field across the state for broadband infrastructure. And when we talk about broadband infrastructure, what we're really talking about is fiber optic cable, things like that, uh, that type of infrastructure that supports the higher speed internet. And so that broadband ordinance, once uh, it's adopted in place, that's two. And of course, the third step is to apply to become a broadband ready community and get that uh, uh, certification from the state of Georgia's Department of Community Affairs. And uh, of course, the Regional Commission, we assist at all, all levels of that to make sure that those things get done in accordance to the uh, rules and regulations and in uh, a timely fashion. So that's our part in the process. And once those steps are done, then the community uh, will be eligible for applying for that grant line as it becomes available. And so prior, when this plan was written in 2018, the reason this information was not in there is the state did not yet have their parameters as to what they wanted in a broadband element, a broadband portion of the comprehensive plan, nor was it a requirement at that time, nor was there a, even at that time the slight uh, expectation that there was going to be a grant available in the next few years. So that was not made in part of the 2018 comprehensive plan for the county. Uh, in 2018, later that year, at the end of the year, that's when the change was made. And uh, they changed the minimum standards at the planning level of the state. So now, moving forward, it will no longer be an elective element of the comprehensive plan. It will be required by the state henceforth as part of the comprehensive plan update for a broadband element to be included. So what we're talking about here tonight would be required in a couple of years by the state. This is just getting ahead of the ball in order to be eligible for that grant money should it become available uh, before the next uh, comprehensive plan and regular cycle in a couple of years. And that is the long and the short of it. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. Mr. Chairman? 
So as far as questions, I know on the map, and I don't know if you can kind of explain it. it the one that I saw on the, the previous draft showed more of a centrally located with the strong suits with the east and west ends, both showing the underserved portions. Uh, am I correct that's, on that? That's correct. It's uh, it's more towards the extremities of the county that we're talking about in the further rural areas. Uh, of course, the, the, the primary corridors are much better served than the rest of the county. Right. And the, how often is that updated on the state level as far as updating the map? That's available to us to update on a local level I guess would be the there will be an update to that uh, I have not yet uh, off the top of my head heard uh, an exact schedule as to when they're going to update that so, uh, I imagine it'll be probably somewhere in about once a decade I would think just to see because that's what we would expect it is probably some improvement by that time okay okay it's quite a process so they won't be doing it on a regular basis um, and I think you explained the one part I wanted to make sure that, that everybody did hear that this was done just prior to the requirement that our comprehensive plan was signed in just prior to the requirement becoming. If we didn't do this right now and we waited till 2023 when our next update to the comprehensive plan happened, then that means for the next two years we wouldn't have any eligibility for additional grant money that, that would come available. So that's one of the reasons we wanted to make sure to go ahead and have this, this hearing to, to get this forward. I know we in between meetings heard from a resident that lives in one of the underserved areas that the, the, the faster we can try to work to get more service in, in that area, um, the better, um, combining with some of the other funds that are that have came available on the federal level for all counties to be able to try to, try to how do we put all that together in the right spot, so, absolutely. So, do you guys have any other? Mm -hmm. Anybody in the public have have questions that you'd like to? Uh, is there a copy of the map that we can see in the underserved areas and now? Does that does that mean that they're going to be more likely to qualify? The more underserved areas you've got, and will they be upgraded at the same time as the rest, or or are we still going to be on the back burner and going to be at the end of the line? Well, that's a good question. So what, what your question is, is the, the areas that show underserved on the map, do they have a, a better chance of being better served, better equipped in that time? And the answer is yes, absolutely. The underserved areas are the areas that are eligible for this grant funding. The areas that show is already served uh, will, will have a much lower, if not an ineligible uh, application. So the areas of the county that will be uh, affected by this are those areas that show currently as underserved uh, areas. And those are the ones that will have the most, the highest competitive edge to for that grant money. And to be considered underserved, is anybody under 25? That's correct. I think it's 25 uh, download, 3 megabits upload, I believe, is for that term. is USDA in the state's term. All right, LJ. Yes, that's correct. So that's that's where that is uh, derived from. Is that's the threshold that they use to measure <laughs> served versus underserved. Mm -hmm. Is a, is a citizen now, are they something that we can do to help speed the process up or to at least keep track of what's being done? Or their uh, website or their anything that we can do? Because I've been five or six years of the internet. I've um, been calling companies and trying to get competition in and getting robots every which way you know. and I've got two companies now that are saying that they're coming to my area. And I'll, but you know, I they told me not to get blocked in if I'm not going to get coverage because they knocked me out of grant money to actually get service. So I don't know what to do next. Well, and then as you just you know, one of the one of the factors here, and, and uh, I think a good correlation to what we're doing now in this broadband situation is uh, that of the Electri Rural Electrification Act back in the. Uh, the 1930s uh, where they were trying to get electricity out into rural communities and of course that was at that time a major technological feat and uh, today broadband is, is an integral part of that too but one of the issues is that uh, a lot of the reasons these areas are underserved is because the population of uh, people the density of people is, is low and therefore the return on investment for the uh, 
providers is very low, and so this grant money helps to get that infrastructure out into those low density areas um, faster and uh, in, in this critical time. So this this is definitely a way to speed that up. The grant the grant process is, is trying to address those issues, those areas that are underserved that don't right now make economic sense to get to, but because this broadband technology is seen today as critical infrastructure for all those things from medical service to uh, industry to uh, uh, education, they, they've seen that as a public infrastructure. Got a question? Yes, sir. Will this help about competition between the company because the way the county is now, we've got, you know, we've got a lot of large servers, you know, one company kind of in the west end, one county, one company kind of in the east, and I know, like you said, there's economic uh, factor to play, you know, making it work for a while, but if what you're doing, is, is that going to help about bringing, you know, different competition in to help with prices and, and in the end, you know, better service? Well, how, how this works essentially from the grant side of things is it's a public-private partnership. So the uh, county would be involved in that as well as the uh, a private provider. And the private provider is going to be the one that makes the most logistical sense to serve that area. So it's not necessarily bringing in more competition. The idea here is it's not really about the competitive side of things. The idea here is to get the infrastructure into those underserved areas in the most cost effective and ex expeditious way or most expedient way possible and uh, so wherever the providers are and where those partnerships are formed uh, in those areas that are strategically picked for uh, expansion that are uh, pre uh, prepared for that expansion again it's a logistical thing it's a matter of where is the infrastructure now and where does it make sense to reach the most amount of people and so that's kind of in a nutshell how that, that side of things is going to work. It doesn't necessarily bring in providers from outside. It's going to likely work with the providers that are already in the area. You're just trying to get them more equipment to get a better quality of That's internet right. out to what we're Better quality and a, and a broader service area. Any other questions or comments? Yes, sir. Um, I, uh, as the economic development guy, it's important to state the obvious in this case. Uh, I started this business 20 years ago, and it was power, water, gas, and electricity, and, you know, and sewer. That was the utilities it took to run a community. Uh, that has changed. Phones became a big deal. Then now phones have faded away because now it's broadband. And if you think about it, Pickens County is a poster child of what I'm about to say is, you can be completely successful in this county with only electricity and broadband. You do not have to need water or sewer because you can get it on your site. You don't need gas. You can get propane on your site. So the two critical pieces of infrastructure today and going forward in the mountains of North Georgia are electricity and fiber. And this is the path to get us to the fiber. Thanks. Thank you Jeff. very much. We really do appreciate you coming up and, and presenting. Um, I know that you mentioned the, the viewing the map. I believe the map is available on DCA's website, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it's available on the websites. We have it. It'll be made part of the plan, and uh, it's, 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 it's accessible. So that way it is it is publicly out there the reason we haven't put it on our site is because if they do an update and we've took and took it off their site and put it on ours ours won't update along with theirs so we uh, will refer people to, to view theirs now once we put it in our comprehensive plan that comprehensive plan will be posted on our site and it will be available um, to the public if, if, if the board so chooses to, to adopt when we get into a voting meeting so to be able to adopt that so um, and then we'll be working closely with, like I said, when we met before the public hearing, we've been meeting with a couple of the different um, broadband providers within the community that are, that are equally excited for any infusion of grant money to start expanding what they're able to do. Um, we do have a couple of providers that have not expressed a lot of eager excitement to, 
to expand. So this hopefully will give us an opportunity for the ones that, that are willing to go into these underserved areas to get in there. So that's that's our hope with partnering up with them. So that is the go. Yes. Uh, just real quick, I was just uh, make a quick statement, I guess, on behalf of DPC, if that's okay, just uh, as part of the conversation. So. Uh, my name is Jason Smith. I'm the Chief Operating Officer for ETC. Uh, we came to Pickens County as a, as a phone provider in, in 1999 and a few internet customers. Uh, since then we've grown. We've got uh, maybe more, maybe a few more than 10,000 customers in Pickens County now. So we've, we've really tried our best to, to serve as many folks as we could that we could um, earn a return on our investment. So. Uh, we would encourage you guys to, to really think solidly about this and, and uh, to go forward with it. We're, we're actively working on several grant opportunities. Some require the, uh, or don't require, but as Ethan said, you get a lot more points uh, if you're a broadband ready community. Uh, some don't, but, but that's something I would encourage you guys to do because we're actively looking at those. We've pretty much built to the locations that we can, can get a return on. Um, and so without growth, I mean, as, as there's continued growth and there's new areas, um, but, but now we're looking at places that we can fill in with customer revenue plus grant revenue, that's going to allow us to continue expansion of the network. So I would, again, encourage you. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Um, I would like to know, uh, I know we've, uh, a lot of people in my communities got on the website and signed up and all, and when we get on there, it basically it won't tell us anything and all, so we don't know if we're being considered. I did have somebody that emailed me personally and told me that I was in a block, and it's going to let me know if I was going to be in a service block or if I'm just in the block, and then they never did return, uh, return anything back to me and all, so they never let me know if were being considered because uh, I talked with TD yesterday, I talked with Mr. Dean and Al, and he basically told me unless the city council came to him and the, basically demanded that they upgrade the service, that they're not willing to do anything. And they told us we're running on phone wire, we're, we're lucky if we can get 10, it's really the maximum it's supposed to carry. and. And it's the lines are so bad that whole service you're up and down and in and out and it, two cans and a wire would do better hanging from a tree. <laughs> Seriously, we tried to do almost a lot of school last year and it my grandson kept losing connection and the, the teachers were like, well, what do we do? Because he's here for half the class and we're losing him. Do we count him for us? Do we count his work can't be turned in because it middle of cement and it would go out. And I run a business, try to run a business, and I'm, I'm having to rely on my cell phone for it. And you know, in the mountains, that ain't great either. So what what could we do to bring it into our? And I've talked with a lot of people in other other areas of Kansas County that has no service of any any source whatsoever. Yeah, really, what you're describing is is exactly how we've grown our network uh, over the last few years. Is is we work with groups of customers and, and get interest and once we get to a certain level then we set a goal and once we reach that goal we're able to you know to do the bill uh, we actually have a grant that we're we're working on uh, the application will be submitted before october 31st is the deadline so uh, it'll be be working with some other entities uh, with the joint development authority for gilmer and pickens county and uh, so as soon as that's complete you may actually be on my list to, to confirm. I, I've got a few people that I'm calling back, uh, and I just didn't want to make that confirmation until we were sure what the service area was, because it can change um, as we're doing our final look and whatnot. But, yeah. So yeah, it's, uh, I think there's around 900 locations in this grant application that we're looking at. I do know how much it costs to buy myself, Taryn, and convert it. I heard, like, Sun City did that in California now, and I was like, let's see, <laughs> because we don't have any sense service either, so we're really, we lost uh, power in Perkins when we had storm come through in 2020, and we left it out and didn't have any checks because nobody could get any service because we had nothing. No power, no internet, no cell phones, no nothing, and, uh, and I live in an elderly community, and 
So we did neighborhood checks just to make sure everybody was okay. Yeah, and it was in the middle of COVID, so everybody would go to the porch and wave and holler at each other. Yeah. And do you need anything? We're going to try to go to the store or whatever because we had no, no way of getting hurt of anybody. Uh, and, and that's what we're striving to do. I mean, that was the whole purpose of, of trying to get this through and, and, mm -hmm. and get it so we hope to be able to help confuse the private businesses that are then able to, to get out and expand further. So this is it's right at 5.30. I know that we do have a, a, our regularly scheduled meeting that we've got coming up right after there. So I'm going to call the, the end to our public hearing so that we can move into that. I want to thank Ethan again for coming up and for, for providing all that information. Thank Jason for, for being here with ETC and for kind of giving us an update there. And I'd like to thank you for coming on, on behalf of the community to express the, the need. I think that, that we all know uh, it is definitely there. So, yes, thank you. And I'll do anything I can to help and get the community involved because I'm member of several different groups and um, we're all trying to say that. Just, most everybody was at work today and they're like, just go and post and let us know what's being said and what's being done because, er, you know, when students call, the kids can't connect. You know, and so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.